All right, today we're going to be going over Ji Fang Shang. All right. So this character is really cool. It actually reminds me, oh my god, three of these guys. Definitely none of these. Um, yeah, none of these. Three of these people. That's funny. This character is not very common. So seeing three of them in, in a single lobby is very strange. I was actually going to say... Let's see about this first turn for a second before we... Say something like that, probably. Maybe I keep this. Probably not. I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Just in case. Is that this also, character reminds Ji Fang Shang reminds me of this character in a way. Except this character has like a physique line and a crash fist line. Whereas this character has a physique line and an internal injury line. So kind of similar in a in an interesting way. Um We'll go Elixirist. I've been doing a lot of Elixirist, but it's it's just good on so many characters. It's it's definitely the most like universally not really going wrong if you pick Elixirist type of thing. Probably something like this. I do want to be gaining some physique. Probably not using this. And at this point with this upgraded, probably not using this either. So let's do that. Um and funny enough, another thing about this character I wanted to note is I've been trying to get all the achievements in this game, and one of them is single player. And this character is so busted in single player because the single player was like made when this sect didn't even exist. And so a lot of the units, like a lot of the, the builds of the people you fight are just like obsolete against this character. Like the fire character. Like if if like if you're playing against um if they do a fire build, you can do fire against this sect if you put the phoenix early, to reduce like their max HP to, like their current HP kind of, but, the computer doesn't do that a lot, so, like their max HP reduction is just like, irrelevant. You know what I mean? And then there's the um, there's like the farmer guy. That's interesting. You always take this, by the way. This one is, this is like one of the most crazy um, nine cultivation breakthroughs, in my opinion. It's it's so strong. Uh, you always take that, I would say. It, it, the other three can vary, but I would say you always take this. Um, but, what was I saying? Oh yeah, there's the, the farmer guy who, he does the weed thing that reduces your... Um, like cutting weeds or something, and it reduces your max HP. That doesn't matter against these people. Um, there's so many things. I mean, there's this weird little mechanic with the Doan Wang. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it, but with the sect. And um, if you gain physique, so if you've ever played single player, if you lose, you can retry, you can reorganize and retry, and try to win again, right? Well, on this character, you keep your physique that you gain from the last battle. And you can even like break through using physique. So you can lose, break through using physique, and then retry, and then just get all of your uh all of your destiny back. So this character is super broken in single player. I mean most people probably don't care about single player. This is interesting. Uh this can be good if you don't get the elixir that reduces your internal injury. Um, I think I will go for it, just in case. I, I don't get it. I think the elixir that reduces your internal injury is a little bit better, but I think it's definitely, um, manageable without it. Uh, sorry, just thinking here. Did I ever do something like this? Is that better than this? This is... it's got the two force. Hmm. I'll try that. 
I don't know if that's right or not, but. Um. Oh yeah, this character is really strong in single player. So basically, there's two sort of sublines you can go with this character. There's an elixir that reduces the amount of internal injury you have, and you can go that route. Or there's the card that I took on the, I forget what that's called, like the Taoist Omen or whatever. Um, and you can go that route. Oh, so close, so close. Um, you can go Elusive Footwork, or you can go the Elixir that reduces your injury. In my opinion, the Elixir that reduces your injury is better. Um, unless you're going for the full internal injury line. I think the physique line is probably better on this character, and you're probably better off going with the uh, the elixir. But if you're going internal injury, or if you need the key, like let's say you're doing a sort of force type build, where um, there's the one where you gain force based on how much key you have and five agility, and then there's the other one. I think it's called Vast Universe that gives you agility based on your force. If you're doing that, the elusive footwork is better than the. Um, um, the elixir, but Fang Song, bang you shooting Jing Man. I think in general the elixir is better. Just because I think the physique line is better. I, I think it'd be if the internal injury line was better. Obviously, the elusive footwork would be better. But I just think the physique line is a little bit better. Oops, I did that in the wrong order. Oh my god. Distracted. Well, we're both uh, gaining a lot of physique, at least. <laughs> that was a good amount of physique for me. I, I didn't. I missed a lot on a lot of the early game physique cards. This is the card I was talking about, Exorcism Elixir. I missed out on a lot of the early physique cards, which is fine. Another thing that's funny, that's broken about single player, is this memory fragment. Because getting enough cultivation, really, for, in single player, comes from, like, your choices. Um, each round, like, you get these little choices. And so you take this, and you're just getting, like, all your cards mega upgraded. And you're, and you're never running out of physique. And it's really busted. So this is really busted in single player, too. Another reason why this character is really good. But, um... You're not in single player, so I probably won't be taking this because it doesn't give you cultivation. I'll probably take this. Um, we do that. We do that. If all right, I didn't uh, do that how I wanted to, but I should have probably just done the extra system elixir. But it is what it is. I mean, you start getting really strong. Like I'm building the pieces. You might think, like, why am I keeping this? This uh, hexaproof thing just for this wound doesn't seem worth it, you know. But I'm building the pieces towards uh, the next breakthrough, which is when you really start to shine in this character. Let's see, let's see. Interesting. Oh, gain some physique. <laughs> Right. This might be useful. My next breakthrough. Oh, look at this. I can use this. So at the beginning of the turn, she's going second, I believe. So I'm gonna at the beginning of my she's gonna I'm gonna play this and she's gonna play it, then boom boom. So I can play this here. Something like that. You know, I could even do that. I don't know. Is that troll? I'll try it out. This defense is useless here, oh, but but I want the force. Okay, yeah, but we'll keep it like this for now.
Alright, so everything was ordered well. Transfer the wound. Should I I mean if I don't win this, then I guess I'm just weak. <laughs> because everything went how I wanted it to go. There we go. Alright. Getting that one breakthrough is actually huge. I mean, that one physique, it actually just let me break through right now. Uh, so I'm taking this. You, There are more complicated lines you can do where you actually... You, so basically, for those of you completely unfamiliar with the character, there's a fifth tier card. You turn your um, internal injury into... Increased attack. Let's see. Let's do this for a second here. This will be two, two, four, six. So that's in the right spot. Do I want to do this earlier? Probably not doing you. Um, let's just set this for now. Like I was saying, I think this is in general better than the elusive footwork. Because, like, it would take eight turns for this to equal a single chase. All right, you're getting the two agility, then one a turn. So eight so, turns for one chase. So it's, it's, you know, I don't think it's worth it unless you're utilizing the key. So, but anyway, you turn your, your turn, turn your internal injury into increased attack. And so basically, um, there's ways you can, you can also do, there's a chasing card that gives you a stack of decreased attack. And what you can do is you can turn that into increased attack and you can skip this car tar bleh, card entirely and um, do like a four turn thing where you're you're turning you're debuffing yourself and turning it into increased attack. But that's a little bit more high really. So and this is when you get crazy strong because I look at I'm healing a, 11 more a turn than I am uh, taking for my internal injury due to this elixir and this. Um, magnanimous righteousness. So it's at this stage of the game where you're just like insanely strong. So I definitely win this. Um, absorb here. And we don't want to use too much physique because now we're also gaining physique like crazy. Which means we'll definitely hit the breakthrough from physique, not cultivation. Um, let's see here. You might be gone. be gone probably right roll you that's good it does change things a little bit though i can do this this is two then it goes down to one when, when i'm saying these numbers by the way I'm, I'm thinking about the internal injury if you're confused so this is nothing because it's at the start of your turn this is two then it goes down to one And this is three. Then I get the three stacks of hexaproof. So then this is three with one stack of hexaproof. And then this goes to four. And this is six. So I want this to be reducing as much as possible. So we'll put this here. And now that I don't have that key, because I got rid of the um, that first tier um, physique card, I only have the key for this. So I'll put it in the palms. Fossil. So getting, I mean, getting, reducing six internal injury from this card is just so busted. My brother's text, that's why I've been distracted. My brother's texting me and calling me. Uh, I'm trying to shoot this video, man. You gotta, uh, trying to shoot this video. <laughs> Yeah, I'll shoot him a text real fast. Sorry about this. Damn, I lost. I didn't see. <laughs> that sucks. Usually this is when you're crazy strong, so I'm kind of surprised. All right, so we just stay here. Because, um... at 25 because we should break through 
And to make it extra um, sure that we break through, I'm going to try and get this uh, physique going here. I really want to make sure I get this to 55. I'm holding on to this just because I, has, I haven't needed the cultivation, but it's pretty safe to get rid of this pretty soon. I mean, if I get a really strong internal injury line on tier 5, I can pivot, but I'd really rather go the physique line. Actually, we'll do that, All right? This is zero, and this brings me down to one stack of hex proof. Then I get one here. Yeah, that's fine. Better do that here. Get the hex proof as early as possible. Save me. Some damage. So it's a very weird character. Like you don't use this card on like really any character, but this one. You don't use exorcism elixir on like really any character, but this one. So it's like a very interesting character. It's all about like mitigating your internal injury and getting this regeneration to be way higher than the internal injury. That's basically the name of the game. Um, and you can do that with Hexaproof. You can do that with the Elixir. You can do that with the fifth tier card I'm about to take. But see, now I'm gaining 10 health a turn. I mean, it is so hard to deal with this character if they get rolling. Gaining 10 health a turn. This is going to reduce my internal injury by three. So, or I'm going to take three less. So then I'm going to be getting 13 health a turn. You know, it just gets crazy. I mean, you know, this obviously the um, truncate increases the um, internal attack, uh, internal injury by one. So all these just kind of work together. So we will be taking this. And now we can start rolling. More hexaproof. So see this card? This is the one I was talking about. There's the one that gives you force based on your um, key. And then this card. And you can do kind of a setup with this with the elusive footwork. So we will hold on to this vast universe because I could pivot to that. Probably won't be pivoting. We'll see. That's huge. This converts. Um, I don't think I'm doing this now, now that I have this. All right. Probably not even doing this. That's the internal injury line. This is the internal injury line, which I'm, I'm deciding I'm not doing. So this is zero, two, still two, and then this is three. So that's that's a good order. I should I should have moved the elixir. Uh, elixir last, but is what it is. It's not gonna it's not gonna fully block. And you do get rid of this eventually, because you're you're mitigating your internal injury with this breaking palm here, demon breaking palm. Um, and so eventually this doesn't get the value that it gets in the mid game, but for now, I think it's still valuable, but it should be last. See that reduced my internal injury by three. It's for every 20 physique. So it's going to start out at three and then eventually you can reduce four internal injury with it. I could reduce an extra two if I was a little bit, um, faster with this exorcism elixir. I was rolling down, so... Directed. I mean, I'm getting 14 health a turn. All right, 22 versus 6. Or before it was 20 and uh, 6, but... So that's how you do it. I mean, again, eventually, once you hit that 80 uh, physique, then this character... I mean, it's already really strong, but it becomes, like, giga-broken. That is that 55 already. 
Yeah, she took cultivation here and here. There's no way I'm going first. So I'm just gonna hold. I mean, I don't need this strong force. Actually, I'll hold it. You know what I like to do sometimes? If I really, like, really know I'm going second, is I like to hold on to as many cards as possible. That way I trick the next player. So not this player, but the next player. If they scout me, they'd be like, oh, his cultivation's really low. But then all of a sudden it's gonna get a big jump because I'm gonna be absorbing cards. So I'm not even, even though there's no way I'm ever playing this, I'm not gonna absorb it because I know I'm going second. And it might help me trick like the next guy, you know? I think this is better than the level one exercise marrow here. Because I am I am using utilizing the uh, attacks from it. 8% of my health. Let's let's we might as well look. 8%. I'm at like 160. 8% of that is what is it? It's like 14. It's decent. This is giving me four health and three attack for my next three attacks. So four plus nine, they're actually really close to level one here. Um, that's kind of funny. I thought I thought this would be way better, but it's actually really close. But I'll just keep it like this. And eventually we're going to want, I think it's called like Realm Killing Palms or something instead of this Windward Palms. And... And then that's pretty much, you know, we might get rid of this uh, magnanimous righteousness too, but we're getting there. Definitely in the late game, playing this card is a little bit slow, but. Ooh, close. Oof. That's scary because the shocks does increase damage based on how low your health is. And her health was obviously very low, so. Spooky. Should have looked. I didn't need to absorb all those again, but that's fine. Now, this is definitely better than this at this point. But this will be better. I think even a tier two, I'll swap out. Rather than, yeah. Once I get this to tier two, I'll swap it out. But this is better for now. I'm utilizing every attack. All right. Four attacks. This is three, this is two, so I'm doing five. So what do I want? I want Realm Kill Killing Palms, I think it's called, uh, instead of this. It's the attack that does more attacks based on how much physique you gained. And then I want the it's, I forget what it's called, but it, it's the one that, um, it gives you, it's like a physique caning card, a fifth tier card, like this one, right? It's a fifth tier card and it gives you physique and also gives you agility and increased attack. So eventually I'm going to want that card too. And that's kind of the full build. It's very similar again to, is this card exercise soul? That's what I want. I want exercise soul. Let's see. The, I mean, these builds are, are similar to what I'm doing. Well, this guy, I, oh my God, what is this? This guy's nuts. Bitchy. This card's cool. What you do with this card, this is a very weird card, is there's a Crash Fist card that gives you increased attack on your next attack, and then you basically... um. Use it to get a big, this one right here. You do subdu subdue dragon into a big multi attack. That's basically the idea. Damn, he's got he's gonna beat me. I mean, this build kind of sucks, but he has two exercise souls, so I think that's kind of too strong for me right now. Yeah, unfortunate. There we go. Nice. Not doing this. Probably doing this. Probably done with the, uh, so this is two, then this is four. Oh, I'm sorry, this is two. I mean, okay, zero, because it's at the start of your turn. So zero internal injury, two, four. So we want this here. Um, what goes first though, this or this? Probably this. 
probably doing that. Eventually, we do get rid of these. See, this is like the keyless version of it, and then the um, you know, there's a key version of it. But yeah, this one's cool. So you do physique gaining, you do crash this, and you do physique gaining cards like he's doing with the soul and the soul and the marrow, and then you do a realm killing palms. This card here. Which is what I want. Oh, this guy's doing it too. Okay, he's got the crash. All right, this is, I mean, this is a build you don't see often. And funny enough, we got kind of like two people doing it. It's, it's a cool build. And then once this gets fully upgraded, you're getting nine attack on this card. And you're attacking, making an additional attack for every 25 physique. So you're attacking three or four turns, three or four times. I mean, you're getting the nine. Kind of, It's kind of like a sword intent almost on it. So it's kind of cool. All right, and then I'm gonna get defense here. Hopefully, well, there's no way he one-shots me, yeah. As I say, even if he had this fully upgraded, there was no way he was gonna one-shot me. So, we are solid. And now I'm scary. I mean, look at 14 health a turn. It's crazy. So, a very, very strong scaling on this character. You do have to worry about the one shot, which is why, um, there we go. We are getting blazes. Not doing that. Not doing this anymore, so I don't care about either of these. And there is a possibility this person goes first. So I, I think, uh, Magnanimous Righteousness, I think her days are over. So we will do that. So yeah, I mean, you know, just more exercise souls, right? Exercise soul gives you agility. So you kind of have to work math it out a little bit in terms of like utilizing Korean footworks versus exercise souls. Um, you want to try to get, you know, as many chases as you can manage, but you also don't want to over agility. You don't want too much Korean footwork. But the way I have it set up now is good. I mean, I'm only gaining... That's 23, 28. I'm only getting 28 agility to play through. So um, this crane footwork isn't like redundant, but you definitely don't want to overdo the crane footworks. Um, so more exercise souls, more realm killing, killing palms, probably get rid of this um, exorcism elixir. Because eventually, uh, eventually that's just too slow. You know, games end on like turn four and the ultra late game, turn five. So, um... You, you definitely just, you want to be fast eventually. And that's what I was saying, where you can not take this meditation of Zwan or whatever. And then you can take um, the decreased attack chasing card and use that to charge um, your demon palm. And it's just a little bit, is he dead? Okay, good. Because I would have been dead next attack for sure. Um, it's just a little bit faster. But again, it's more high rolly. So I think it's usually better just to take this. Because you really need to... I mean, I haven't even seen one of them. Um, this card, okay. Good, I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to show it. <coughs> Sorry. So this card only gives you two decreased attack at rank three. And if you really want to utilize this demon breaking palm without this card... Um, in the ultra late game. So now I have 80 physique. So now I'm getting rid of four stacks of debuff from this card here. You would need like two level two sticks agilities in order to make it work. And it's just it's just very high rolly. Uh, you go sticks agility into exercise soul or something like that into sticks agility into demon breaking palm. Then another exercise soul probably 
into maybe Exercise Marrow and then Realm Killing Palm, Realm Killing Palm, and you can turn four. And it's it's a very strong build. I mean, it's it's turn four. Um, and plus, you could put healing in the middle of it too. So it's like a very strong turn four, but um, I'm not doing this by the way, but it's just a little high really. But you can definitely get 40 agility because the level two, I mean the level three of this, of the uh, card that gives you decreased attack, attack is like, I, sh I shouldn't have absorbed it. I think it's like 18 agility, something like that. So you can very easily get 40 agility for a full chase. All right, I think I'm, I think I'm good into this guy. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm not. Please don't be 25. It could be close. Oof, brutal. All right, I think I showed off what I wanted to show off. That's kind of how the character goes. It would have went better. Actually, let me watch for a second. It would have went better with, you know. One exercise soul, one level one exercise soul, one level one realm killing bombs is not going to win you the game. You would need more of these. Um, but that's basically how it goes. And then you do want to get, I had this for a really long time only because I wasn't finding these realm killing palms and these exercise souls. But you do want to get rid of this eventually. As you could see against the guy I just first, it's, it's way too slow. Um, in the mid game, it's incredibly strong, the exorcism elixir, but in the late game, it's way too slow. But that's basically how you play this character. Oops. I didn't actually want to watch this, but um, that's basically how you play that character. It's uh, it's a pretty cool one, and uh, thanks for watching.